Vlog 10. John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Tablets are bound to be the hot item this holiday season, and two tablets currently reign supreme. In one corner, we have the Apple iPad, and the other, we have the contender, the Samsung Galaxy Tab. With RIM's playbook looming large, these two are really top of mind. I'm going to put these two head-to-head -head in an eight-round tablet smackdown and see who comes out on top. These types of comparisons are bound to enrage fans on either side. I think the comments will be fun to watch. The eight rounds are going to break down into display, operating system, wireless storage, camera, browser performance, and battery life. We will declare a winner. There are obviously a myriad of other topics we could choose from. Uh, we had to pick eight that I thought surmised the strengths, the weaknesses, and sort of brought these two tablets best head to head. Let's go ahead and jump right in with the display. Since they are tablets, it's what you're going to be looking at while you're doing everything uh, with both of these devices. The iPad has a 9.7 inch IPS display with a resolution of 768 by 1024. Galaxy Tab is a little bit smaller at 7 inches with a resolution of 600 by 1024. Galaxy Tab has a little bit of a higher pixel uh, density than the iPad, but the screen on the iPad just looks beautiful uh, for watching video and pictures. And it seems to just pop a little bit more than the Galaxy Tab does. If you want to see what video looks like on the Galaxy Tab or the iPad, I'm sure to check out previous videos. I'll put links down below. Uh, but suffice to say, the screen on the iPad just looks better. Uh, we're not talking about uh, the size or anything, just the quality of the display. Uh, one nice thing where the Galaxy Tab does shine over the iPad in the display standpoint is in the ebook section. Uh, text looks very, very, very nice uh, with a higher pixel density. And there's a little bit less glare while reading books than you get with the iPad. But if you take sort of the view overall, when you look at video, pictures, books, web browsing, everything that you would do at a screen, uh, the iPad definitely takes this round. All right, so next we're going to jump into operating system. The Galaxy Tab is running a customized version of Android 2.2. Uh, Samsung put a lot of tweaks in to sort of optimize it for a tablet. Uh, it is by no means a tablet operating system. It's certainly meant for mobile phones. Uh, but Samsung has done a very nice job of sort of using some of the things they learned with their Galaxy S series of devices and their TouchWiz tweaks uh, to make it this will work very well with the tablet operating system. Jump into applications. Uh, scrolling is very smooth. You sort of see the icons are encapsulated. Uh, they both look very, very similar. You jump into the ebook reader now. Uh, it looks very similar to what we've seen on other devices. Uh, they've done a nice job taking what wasn't meant to be a tablet operating system, really sort of tableting it up uh, and making it work quite well. If you want to see a full software overview, uh, again, there'll be a link down below to that. Uh, on the Galaxy Tab. Uh, one of the nice things about the Galaxy Tab as well is that it's running Android and it is of course open. Uh, so one of the things you can look forward to is people probably rooting the device and uh, getting access to sort of customize it and make it uh, suit you the best. Uh, that's nice the potential for custom ROMs. Uh, on the other side of the fence, uh, the iPad is an operating system that was modified for the tablet and it's, uh, Apple's very vertically integrated, meaning they control the software, they control the hardware. So the operating system was made for this tablet device. Uh, certainly was modified from the iPhone. Uh, if you use an iPad, you know that you're going to sort of get a little bit of a locked down uh, scenario, but with that locked down niche, you're going to get access to the iTunes Store, which will let you uh, rent movies, uh, rent TV shows, and certainly the uh, App Store as well, uh, as opposed to the Android Marketplace that you're going to get on the Galaxy Tab. Sort of the Android versus iOS is the debate that we could talk about uh, for quite some time. At the end of the day, this is going to come down to personal preference. Uh, whether or not you prefer Android, whether or not you prefer iOS. My big worry was not how Android performs as an operating system, but how it's going to perform as a tablet operating system. Uh, and I've seen Android tablets not perform all that well, uh, but Samsung has done a really nice job about making Android work very nicely on a tablet device. So this round, personal preference, uh, definitely has to be a draw. Next, let's talk about wireless. Uh, these things don't have Ethernet ports, so they got to rely on wireless signals uh, to get all their network information. Uh, the iPad, of course, comes with Wi-Fi. You can get an AT&T 3G version. Uh, the Galaxy Tab, of course, is Wi-Fi as well, uh, but will be available on every carrier uh, in the U.S. and a myriad of carriers uh, abroad as well, so you can pick the best network service uh, for you. And you can choose pay-as-you-go plans uh, for each of the carriers, so you're not limited. Uh, to just one. You can choose whether or not you want even access uh, that wireless information. 
Uh, so because you can pick your carrier, you're not limited to one. If you don't get good AT&T service, uh, you can go with Verizon, you can go with Sprint or T-Mobile, depending on where you're going to be. They're all going to offer a flavor uh, of the Galaxy Tab. So that definitely gives the Galaxy Tab uh, a very nice edge in the wireless uh, department. And this is a category that's really important to some people. If you're not near Wi-Fi and uh, you want to have a signal and sort of use this as a media device or use it for a business device, uh, you need to have a signal wherever you are. And being able to pick the network of your choice uh, really is a nice boon uh, for the Galaxy Tab. So next, let's talk about storage. You've got to store some things on these devices. The iPad, you're going to be able to get 16 or 32 gigabyte configurations. And at this point, let me jump in and say I'm not matching price on purpose. Uh, these videos sort of are viewed over a long period of time, and pricing on these devices change uh, expectedly pretty regularly, specifically the Galaxy Tab. Uh, Apple's prices are pretty solid, uh, starting at $499. The Galaxy Tab prices are bound to fluctuate uh, from carrier to carrier and from region to region. So the iPad comes in two configurations, 16 or 32, uh, and you're sort of limited at that. You can't expand or uh, contract depending on your needs. Uh, the Galaxy Tab, the base one, comes in 16 gigabytes, but it does feature on the side a micro SD card slot where you can go and edit and put in rather uh, as big a card as you want, sort of make this uh, customized a little bit better for you. And I'm not really going through and showing all the things with the operating system that I'm talking about. In the interest of time, I want to just give you a general overview and uh, talk about them. So because the Galaxy Tab lets you pick as much storage as you want, if 32 is not enough, you can certainly keep going up. You can add a 32 gigabyte card and tack that on to your 16 gig of internal storage. Uh, you have again a bit more flexibility with the Galaxy Tab, which probably ties into the openness uh, of Android. So from a storage standpoint, uh, the Galaxy Tab is also going to take this round. And I would be remiss to not talk about cameras uh, when dealing with two tablets. And that's one area really where the Galaxy Tab uh, is definitely a winner, just the fact that it has a camera. And it does actually have two cameras. It's got a 1.3 megapixel sensor on the top, and it's got a 3 megapixel camera with autofocus and flash on the back. Uh, the iPad clearly is without any sort of camera. And that's important to a lot of people. I thought it was one of the big determining factors and that really separated differences between these two. Uh, so if you're noticing a trend here, uh, the Galaxy Tab is also going to take this round. Uh, so I've done a lot of overviews on the browsers and sort of what each of them look like and uh, sort of the nuances uh, of each. Uh, I will say that Android browser is Android browser you've seen on really every other uh, Android phone and the iOS browser and mobile Safari is really what you've seen on the iPhone and the iPad uh, many times before. Uh, main difference here, this has been tweaked a little bit uh, for uh, the tabletness, uh, I would say. Uh, you get a little more graphical niceness, uh, I would say, but you also get full flash 10.1 support, which may not be important to you or it may be essential to you. Uh, again, it gives you the options whether or not you want to have flash support, whether or not you want it to be there. If it's essential, then you're going to have that choice. If you don't need it and you want to save battery, you can go ahead and turn that off. And I've sort of done these head-to-head -head comparisons with browsers uh, with Android and iOS devices quite a bit. And the flash support that uh, Android gives uh, almost always gives it an edge. So if you're looking for a really solid browser with nice pinch to zoom, uh, this is going to be a great way to go. Here we've got Google loaded up. Um, Galaxy Tab is once again going to take the browser round. Uh, next, let's talk about performance. This is sort of another area where that vertical integration uh, really comes into play. Again, the fact that Apple controls the software, uh, controls the hardware, and also really relates itself to better performance. These two tablets are all kind of distant cousins. Uh, Apple's A4 chip and Samsung Hummingbird both clocked at 1 gigahertz and really sort of share a lot of similar architecture. However, the performance on the iPad is a bit snappier uh, despite sort of the same clock speed. Uh, so when you sort of come down to multitasking, uh, which sort of the iPad does iffy um, with iOS 4.2, sort of just using general things like iBooks and other devices, uh, it's just a little bit faster. Viewing video loaded a little bit quicker, video looked a little bit smoother. Um, the iPad is just noticeably a little bit quicker. Something that you have to really use both devices to really get a sense of the nuances. Uh, but suffice it to say, uh, the iPad is definitely going to take this round. All right, next let's talk about battery. You're probably going to want to use these things for a little while. Uh, the iPad is sort of a very easy category to judge. Uh, the iPad is a bit larger. It's got a bigger battery, uh, clocking in about 10 hours of usage, whereas the 7-inch Galaxy Tab has a 7-hour battery life. Uh, so that's sort of how 
uh, those are going to break down. So we put these two through eight rounds and I can already hear uh, the comments going crazy down below. I try to be as objective as possible and sort of leave personal opinions out of it and look at these like someone who didn't know much about either device. Uh, so we have uh, eight rounds total. I'll sort of run them through you again. Uh, display went to the iPad. OS was a draw. Wireless went to the Galaxy Tab, which I also should have mentioned that the European version has the ability to make phone calls as well. Uh, storage went to the Galaxy Tab. Camera, of course, with the Galaxy Tab. Browser went to the Galaxy Tab uh, for Flash. Coming back across the board, and the iPad took performance, and the iPad took battery life, which gives us a total of iPad 3, Galaxy Tab 4, Tie 1. Now, that is not to say the iPad is not a better overall device. Uh, personally, I, I, I love the iPad. I think it's a fantastic tablet. It's probably my tablet of choice, but that's a personal uh, opinion. Uh, coming in objectively, uh, the Galaxy Tab offers a bit more flexibility for the user. If you need more storage, you have that option. If you need different carriers to pretty give you better network support depending on where you are, you have that option. If you're in Europe and you want to use it as a phone with a Bluetooth headset, uh, you have that option. If you want to customize it, because it's Android and it's open, you have that option. Uh, you have a lot of options with the Galaxy Tab that you don't have uh, with the iPad. If you're willing to live within Apple's limitations, uh, which like a lot of people obviously are, you're going to get a fantastic tablet in the iPad. Uh, this is not to say that the iPad is a bad buy or a bad value. It's just very different uh, than the Galaxy Tab. Hope this guy's helped and hope this sort of shed some light on which device may be better for you. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.